wanted to hop on and share with you. I'm prepping for my Thursday girls Bible study morning. And for the first time, we're meeting on WhatsApp rather than in person for obvious reasons. But we're studying in the first chapter of Jonah today. And as I've been going through it, I actually listened to the whole book on um, Bible Gateway, I guess, while I was getting ready and have been so moved by this chapter in its applicable um, message for us today. So in the first chapter of Jonah, Jonah is called by God to go call Nineveh to repent. Now, when I read about the Ninevites in that day, I learned that they were gory and gross and evil and vile and very violent. And so it made me understand better Jonah's fleeing initially. Later in the book, we learn that Jonah was a little bit prideful and didn't want the Lord to forgive Nineveh. And I think maybe we can relate to that as well when we think of evil people and the fact that Jesus died for all of us. But anyway, this first chapter really shows a whole different aspect of the book of Jonah than we usually look at. And typically we look at Jonah's fleeing and then God gives him a second chance after the fish spits him out. He goes, he calls Nineveh to repent and they do, which is an amazing miracle. And a beautiful story to to look at and to see that um, a country so evil can repent when God's prophet calls them to. So there's a message in that. But in this first chapter, it's really about the mariners, the men on the boat. When Jonah hides away on the boat, God sends a storm. And it's tempestuous is the word in the ESV that continually increases and so these men cry out to their gods and nothing happens and then they find Jonah in the um, bottom of the boat sleeping of all things <laughs> during a storm who does that remind you of and so eventually Jonah confesses and he says if you want this storm to stop hurl me overboard the word hurl <laughs> is in chapter one of Jonah four times it's so fascinating it makes me kind of laugh because there's a lot of hurling. And when I read about what Nineveh did to people, I felt a little bit like hurling myself. But it's just such a stormy time. And what I saw, what stands out to me the most in this chapter of Jonah is that Jonah became willing. He was running and disobeying God, but he became willing to offer himself for the lives of the mariners. Now, the mariners obviously had heard about God, the God of Israel, the God of the Bible, the God who made heaven and earth is what Jonah, how Jonah describes him. Um, they had obviously heard stories because they feared him. Um, and then they actually cried out to God when Jonah said, throw me overboard and save yourselves because they didn't want to be guilty of killing God's prophet, which is awesome <laughs> that they had that fear of the Lord. So they actually cried out themselves. And what really stands out to me is Jonah as an intercessor. Now, an intercessor, uh, the definition is, the English word is derived from Latin intercedo, to come between, which strangely has the somewhat opposite meaning of obstruct and to interpose on behalf of a person, finally to intercede. So obstruct is to come between death and the people. And that's what Jesus did for us as our intercessor. He, be, he came between death and us. And so Jonah did that as well. Earlier in the study, this is a study that I wrote called Divine Conversations. And in chapter one, we talked about Abraham being willing to sacrifice Isaac because he reckoned that God could bring him back from the dead. But God was only after his willingness. So that's what he's after with us too, that we would offer our lives as intercession, that we would come between men and death, women and death, by praying, by sowing seeds of love, by standing in our faith when the storm is raging all around us with this coronavirus thing, we have the power within us to trust the Lord, to be able to bring peace and joy and hope in the midst of dark circumstances. And I just think of Jonah. He ran into Nineveh said it was a three-day journey through, and he went one day in. So he's in the middle of the city, 
that has such vile people in it and he cries repentance and they do they just fall on their knees obviously they had heard stories of the Lord God and feared him as well and so sisters and brothers um, us sharing our stories of God's work in our lives of his power in our lives of his redemption in our lives is going to lay a foundation for people when hard times happen to look to us and to look to our God for salvation because man cannot stop this virus. Man cannot stop the fallout from this quarantine. Man cannot stop anything from happening that takes supernatural strength, but our God can. He can bring good out of anything. He can bring repentance in this day, and I truly believe that that's one of the main things he's after, that people would come to know him and love him and serve him and be set free from death, from the power of sin and death in the grave, which is what Jesus came to do for us.